Kim. I heard you were teaching us a new game today. That's right. It's a fun, easy to learn card game. You in? Sure. I love playing new games with the gang. A new card game? I want to play. Well, have a seat, Taylor. Am I late? What happened? Did I miss the explanation? You're right on time. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Kim was just going to teach us how to play. Wait. What's this game called again? Today, we're playing Hungry Monkey. In Hungry Monkey, two to six players vie for the coveted bean cards. Players will have to manage two sets of cards in their play area, cards in their hand, and cards in a face-down row in front of them. In order to win, a player must be the first to play all their cards, first from their hand, and then from their card row. Oh, I think Hungry Monkey sounds fun. Chad would love this game. Hey, did somebody say hungry? You betcha. Join us. If you want to play multiple games, just keep track of the scoring with the bean cards. The final scoring is triggered when either any player has 10 or more beans after a game or four games have been scored. The player with the most beans wins. Let's check out the setup for four players. Shuffle all animal cards and deal three to each player as their hand. Deal four animal cards face down in a row to each player. No one is allowed to look at these cards unless specified by a card effect. Place the remaining animal cards in the middle of the playing area in a face down draw pile. Hold the bad kitty card upright next to the draw pile. Then slide it into the deck at the approximate height determined by the number of players as indicated on the card. With five or six players, place the bad kitty below the pile. Play starts with the youngest player. Who's that? It's certainly not me. I was born in the 90s. Maybe I'm the youngest. I think I got you by a couple months there, Mark. I was born in February. I don't think that's how it works, Chad. It's fine. Chad can play first. Right on. Now that that's settled, here's what a player's turn will look like. During a player's turn, they are trying to optimize their cards in both their row and their hand. Then they want to get rid of all their cards once the draw pile reveals the bad kitty card. Players take turns playing cards on the animal stack in clockwise order. Beginning with me! That's right! On your turn, you must play one or more cards face up on the animal pile, trigger a gang of four if possible, otherwise trigger the animal effect, if any. Draw back up to three cards in hand, unless the bad kitty card has been revealed. I think I've got the hang of this. Let's play. Mark, let Kim finish your explanation before you just start playing animal cards from your hand. Yeah, I'm still not sure which animals to play down. I mean, is it better to have high numbers or low numbers? And which animals have special powers? On their turn, the active player will choose one of three ways to play cards. You can play any number of identical valid cards from your hand. If you play more than one card, only the effect of the topmost card can be triggered. You can never play invalid cards from your hand. So, I can play these two hyena cards, number five, to the animal pile. You bet. And then you check for a gang of four. If that doesn't happen, trigger the animal effect. Neither of those happen because there aren't four of a kind on top of the pile, and the hyena doesn't have a special ability. Then you draw back up to three cards in hand. The other option a player has is to play one card from the draw pile. Draw the top card from the draw pile and place it face up on the animal pile. You may choose to play a card from the draw pile even if you have a valid card in hand. Now that it's my turn, I have to play a valid card. For a card to be valid to play on the animal pile, it must have the same or higher number than the card on the top of the animal pile. And just like we saw with Chad, if the animal pile is empty, any card is valid. That's the coolest. Do I have to play a card from my hand? Nope. You can play the top card of the draw deck. Right, right. Here goes nothing. If the card is valid, treat it as if you played the card from your hand. It can trigger an effect or a gang of four. But that animal card isn't valid because it's lower than the previously played card. Now what? If the card isn't valid, you must add the animal pile, including the played card, to your hand and don't trigger its effect. Whoa, that's wild. Right, 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 right. You don't need to draw up to three cards because you have more than three cards in your hand. So your turn's over, 
And now it's my turn. If a player plays a card with an effect, like the Tiny Ant, Swiss Sparrow, or Sneaky Snake, and it doesn't trigger a gang of four, the animal effect is triggered. Because the animal pile is empty, I can play any value card. I'll play this Sparrow, number two, and then I'll swap one of my face down cards with one of the cards in my hand. That's a cool effect. Don't forget to draw back up to three, Barb. And now it's your turn, Taylor. What are you gonna play? Hmm. I think I'll play two buffalo cards. What special effect does that card have? The next player has to play a card that has the same or lower number. And after that, play continues with the normal rules. Uh, I guess I'll play this gazelle. The special effects on the animal cards will change the basic rules of the game for players when they play those cards, making the game dynamic and unpredictable. You can find a list of all the special card rules on the back of the rule book. If there are ever four or more of the same card, including copies by a hungry monkey on top of the animal pile, they trigger a gang of four instead of activating the animal effect. The current player must immediately discard all cards from the animal pile to the face down discard pile without triggering any animal effects. Then draw back up to three cards. Lastly, take another turn. Remember, a gang of four can be formed by cards from different players. Like right now! I'm playing down this, and it will make a fourth of that kind. See? I see. We can always check for four or more of a kind on top of the animal pile. Then clear the animal pile, draw up, and go again, Mark. Way to go, man! The tiny ant is always a valid card. However, a player will take all the cards in the animal pile except any tiny ants played that turn, including hungry monkeys. The swift sparrow allows a player to swap one of their face down cards with one of the cards in their hand. The sneaky snake lets a player peek at one face down card of any player. The slender mongoose gives the player an extra turn after the current one. The extra turn starts after the draw card step. The strong buffalo means that the next player has to play a card that has the same or lower number. Regular play continues unless the next player plays another strong buffalo in which the same rules apply. The king tiger discards all cards from the animal pile including the king tiger to the discard pile. A hungry monkey is always valid and a monkey can be played alone or together with other valid cards. If another animal is on top of the monkey, the monkey copies its effect. If no other animal is on top of the monkey, the monkey copies the animal below and triggers its effect. After playing a card or cards from their hand, players will draw cards until they have three cards in hand. If you have three or more cards in hand, don't draw more cards. If you reveal the bad kitty card, leave it on top. Do not draw any more cards. The draw pile is now considered to be empty and nobody can draw cards for any reason. At this time though, players are allowed to play cards from their face down row once they have no more cards in their hand. But they must play all the cards in their hand first before playing from the face down row. If a card is invalid though, you have to take the entire pile into your hand and get rid of it first before you can play one from the table again. The first player to play all their cards, both from their hand and from their card row, is the winner and draws two bean cards. Hey, check it out. I played all my cards. I'm out. Nice work, Chad. Now draw two bean cards. Whoa, that's a lot of beans. Play continues with the remaining players until only one player has cards left. You can use bean cards to score over multiple games. Play starts with the player who has lost the last game. Looks like it's me. It's okay, Barb. Maybe you'll get the beans this round. After four rounds, or when a player gets 10 beans, the player with the most beans wins because the hungry monkey wants as many beans as they can get. And I'm always hungry. Yep, 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 yep. Have a great time playing Hungry Monkey.